listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna really? feel so aligned. Let's talk about relationships. Yeah. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I just want to keep it real with you. Okay. Why won't men allow a woman to help them build or grow? Oh, that's a fantastic question. I like that question. <laughs> um... That's a really good question. I think the best analogy that I've heard that explains this a little bit, because it's a problem that a lot of women find, especially black women. They're like, you know, he said he wasn't ready. He has to go do something or whatever. He's got to go get himself together. And I've said that too. This isn't just speaking for other people. Like I've been that nigga as well. I'm still that nigga <laughs> currently. Um, so, Miles Monroe, some people may know him, some people may not, but he was a famous preacher back in the day. And I think he's from the Bahamas. He died in a plane crash, so he's no longer alive. But um, some of his sermons involved relationships and men and women dynamics and shit like that. And this particular ser sermon I thought was interesting. He said that... <clears throat> The best lesson about relationships is found in the first book of the Bible, in Genesis, when God created the world and created man. He said that when God created Adam, the first man, right, the first thing he showed Adam, Adam was himself. He said, I am God. Some people interpret that as a man's first priority should be God, right? Um, and I think depending on your religious affiliation that could, you know, that's debatable. But the very second thing he showed Adam was the garden. The very second thing Adam saw when he, you know, got life breathed into him was the garden of Eden. And he told Adam to tend to this garden and all the creatures in the garden. So the first thing God gave Adam after life was purpose, was work. And Miles Monroe's point was a man's number one priority, or he's a preacher, so his number one priority should be God, but his number two priority should be purpose. And his point was the reason why some of our dynamics are messed up is because some men prioritize women before purpose. And they're looking for a wife before they have a way to take care of her. In contrast, um, when God created Eve from Adam's rib, according to this story, the first thing he showed Eve was Adam. And also the reason why Eve ate the apple is because God tasked Adam with teaching her the word. According to the Bible, Eve didn't get the word from God. The word was coming from God to Adam to Eve. Um, now, again, depending on your religious affiliation, you could disagree or um, debate that. But I think the number one thing a man needs to focus on is purpose. And I think I suspect men inherently know this. Because. Before a man, quote unquote, has his shit together, he's not willing, most of the time, he's not willing to settle, right? Because we also know, this is where it gets controversial, that the caliber of woman that we can attract is equal to where we are in life. So it's like, let me run this shit up, let me run up this check to maximize the caliber of woman I can attract. Um, and that's, that's, that's the real reason. That's the real reason. <clears throat> so if 
you could give a black boy age five to 13, any advice, three pieces of advice, mm. what would it be? It's interesting. I have a little brother. He's 17 now. And between the ages of five and 13, I was trying to give him a bunch of advice, a bunch of, if I knew then what I know now advice and the negative, he wasn't trying to listen to that shit. He, he didn't care. What's interesting is now that he's 17, he's now like, damn, dude, you were, you were right. You were trying to put me on game. You were right about women or society or whatever. Um, the first thing I would say is that Being a nerd is a good thing. Being a nerd is lucrative. Nerds, nerds win in the long run. Um, and what I mean by that is, I think boys tend to have short attention spans. But also what's interesting about boys as they differ from girls. So girls can multitask better than boys. That's a fact. But what boys can do is hyper focus on something for a very long time. It could be something stupid. But boys have the ability to hyper focus on what you'll see boys play one video game for eight hours nonstop. Boys have the ability to hyper focus. And that could be a weakness, but it's also a strength if used properly, especially if you're hyper-focusing on the right thing. Um, so, yeah, so nerds win in the long run. So that thing that you care a lot about, um, focus on it, get good at it, define what it means to you and what it can mean to the world. Um, you said three pieces of advice. The second piece of advice is don't worry about girls. Don't worry about girls. Because I, I remember doing a lot of shit in hindsight just to make myself look cool with girls. And in hindsight, I don't know if it was necessarily... And this, this is what's interesting about boys, right? I don't know if it was necessarily to get girls or to convince my friends that I get girls. Does that make sense? Because at the end of the day, what I was looking for was male approval, especially as a boy. And girls were just a path to male approval. Um, so yeah, because at the, at the end of the day, like you, you, the quality of girls that you'll be able to get improves tenfold when you bring value to the world. Um, third piece of advice, <clears throat> pay attention. I think boys and men can be very narrow-minded slash closed-minded and They're more concerned about what they can teach the world as opposed to what the world can teach them. Um, but if, if we would pay more attention to how things work, and when I say how things work, I'm talking about mechanically. I'm talking about the psychology of people. I'm talking about industry. I'm talking about economy. I'm talking about like, be plugged in. You know, white people like to say, uh, have your finger on the pulse, you know, um, and it could be, it could be anything. Cause you'll see like little 13 year old boys. They could tell you every stat about LeBron James yeah. stats. LeBron James himself doesn't even know. So that, that gift is there. Um, now if we can direct that to something more, um, positive, isn't the right word or beneficial to the boy in his future that would be better because unfortunately the reality of the situation is right now boys aren't doing well in school 
You know, we already know male suicide rate is higher than females. We already know that men are falling behind academically, economically, especially black men. Um, so yeah, those would be my three pieces. What would you say are some insecurities that black men feel when trying to climb the corporate ladder or when in the workplace with other races? I mean, I'll speak for myself. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be in those spaces and I'm one of few, right? Um, for any black man who works in corporate America, um, you know that when you look around, it's like, it's you, a bunch of white people, and a bunch of black women. That's kind of the reality. Now, the bunch of black women aren't as many as the bunch of white people, but it's still more than you, right? Um, and some of the challenges with that is you kind of recognize the fact that as a black man, you're inherently viewed as a threat. You're inherently viewed as more physically imposing, more um, sinister, more predisposed to violence, right? And we could talk about Birth of a Nation, W.D. Griffith, uh, but because of that, I have to make sure I'm a little extra articulate. I smile a little bit more than I want to. <laughs> um, because 60% of my job is making white people comfortable. Um, and honestly, like the best advice that I give to black men who are trying to enter or progress through corporate America or networking or whatever the case may be is learn how to make white people comfortable. It's fucked up. It sucks. But, you know, there is something to be said for you have to play the game first before you can change the game. You have to change it from the inside, but you have to get inside. And unfortunately, there's a certain caricature of a black man that they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Anything outside of that is threatening and needs to be exterminated. 